What's going on, everybody? Welcome into the Wednesday, June 5th, 2024 edition of the Daily Energy Newsbeat Stand-Up. Here are today's top headlines. First up, $5 billion in initial capital, Africa Energy Bank created to fund continents, oil, and gas. Industry next up, ride development, converting former Kentucky coal mine into 287 megawatt pump storage hydropower facility, something like out of Stu's backyard. Next up, Aragon says Turkmenistan could soon begin gas exports to Turkey and to Europe. And then finally, in our new segment, oil price plunge hits BP and Shell sales. A nice little touch on the finance segments, which then he will, uh, Stu will then toss it over to me. I will wrap up with what happened in the oil and gas markets today and talk about the uh, the API report. And again, really what we saw with oil prices today, um, plunging over two and a half percent percentage points. So we will cover all that in a bag of chips, guys. As always, I am Michael Tanner, joined by Stuart Turley. Where do you want to begin? Hey, let's start with our buddies over there in Africa. I just got to give a shout out to the African um, Energy Chamber uh, out there. They're doing a great job out there. And and five billion in initial cap capital, Africa Energy Bank created to fund continents oil and gas industry. Uh, Aframix uh, Bank and APPO signed the establishment documents and charter in Cairo. This is exciting. Uh, I'll tell you, I would love to uh, get in there and see why uh, that has been two years in the making on this. And it's uh, pretty exciting when you sit back and try to take a look. Africa needs to go Africa first. Mm hmm. And uh, it's pretty important because right now it's the West is going over there and and draining their resources and taking the raw materials out and manufacturing them not in Africa. Africa needs to drill it. Africans need to drill it. Africans need to have the manufacturing and and then mm -hmm. they need to have the 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 thing there. Well, traditionally, it's 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 a lot of Western countries coming in and 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 uh, taking a lot of the profit or the upside to whatever oil and gas asset is available and bringing it back to uh, you know their shareholders abroad you know this is as you said localizes everything uh you know big 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 fan of this i mean africa struggled to secure you know regular financing for years now which is why i think having a specific you know african energy bank to be able to invest in these type of projects is critical so all right what's I next uh, I think it's critical because the uh, International Monetary Fund ties everything to renewables, and then they have to do that. What are, What are you doing? I was saying, nope, they eye everything to renewables. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, they eye everything to renewables. Okay, I was like, for our podcast listeners, I was like, am, am I speaking sign language with a millennial? I have. What's no next? Ride development converting former Kentucky coal mine into. 287 megawatt pumped storage hydropower facility. This is actually extremely cool, Michael. The Lewis Ridge project, which received 81 million in funding from the DOE, will provide up to 671 megawatt hours of electricity annually and have a daily energy storage slash generation of 2165 uh megawatts it's pretty darn cool yeah so, no that that daily storage of around 2000 megawatt hours is going to be critical in terms of having that backup generation it's a big number it's not a small he, number no i'm sitting there doing the my micro grid in one of my compounds i'm over here going I can put me a trout farm in here and do me some of this. I like this idea. Yeah, yeah, no, we love that. Um, you, you know, you also have to remember, you know, this this county in which this ride development Lewis Ridge pump storage project is going to go into Bell County. It saw nearly 25 percent of its community relocate due to the fact uh, due to the declining coal business in the area. Right. So this is jobs, jobs, jobs. It's more than jobs, jobs, jobs. It is uh, projected that this project could have a hundred year lifetime. What a recycling for a coal mine. I think this is absolutely wonderful. We love good reclamation. What's next? Let's go to Turkmenistan. Um, uh, Erdogan says 
uh, Turkmenistan could soon begin gas exports to Turkey and Europe. I can't be, I would be remiss without mentioning Turkmenistan without mentioning Toby Keith. Toby Keith has one of the greatest songs in the world when he's singing the song and he's going uh, out by Palestine and Turkmenistan. Let's flip the finger to the Taliban. Anyway, you cannot buy that kind of entertainment, but let's jump back to Turkmenistan. Uh, Miss Producer, if you could bring this poster up, the poster's up, and and if Michael, look in the dead center of the pod of the uh, map, and you'll see the Caspian Sea. Turkmenistan is right there in the lower center of the right hand of the picture. Mm -hmm. That orange uh, pipeline coming across is critical because it is going through. My sources are saying this thing is going through. What that means is you can roll right on through to Club Med and now you can start pumping some natural gas in there to the EU and it's going to bypass Russia. This is huge. No. This um, is unbelievably huge. It is huge. And hey, it's the rebalancing of the world's energy economy. We're seeing it live happen right now. So, and we love, we love, love more than a little club man. Da, 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 club man. Club man and flip a finger to the Taliban. I, I When you, we have Turkey primarily interested, this is a quote, interested in Turkmenistan gas because it has to diversify sources of gas imports. And part of this is because of uh, the geopolitical crap that's going on in the EU. Uh, it's unbelievable. You can't buy stupid between the U uh, U.S. government and the EU government. I'm happy for the Turkmenistan folks. No, we're we're always nation first here. What's next? Let's go to oil price plunge hits BP and Shell shares. The slump in oil prices so far has dragged down the top UK oil and gas super major Shell and BP with their stock falling on Tuesday. Uh, BP was down 3.7% and Shell dropped 2%. Um, here's where another article came out. The hunt for $100 oil by OPEC is over. They're saying that they're going to be happy with the $80 mark. What do you think? Well, I mean, it's clear they've already cut and prices have reacted as we sit here today. Oil's 72 bucks. So, you know, now that's still good, but also from the standpoint of, you know, it, uh, it, it may or may not necessarily um, be the best for these companies' bottom line. So, again, I think you're, you're, your oil and gas majors in the UK are always going to lag the U S shale as it's, you know, the U S shale guys, because they're, they're, they're the impact in terms of their exposure to the swing of commodity prices is a little bit less, but it's a lot cheaper to produce over here in the United States, BP shell, you know, they've got some, but not as much access to low cost, you know, lower 48 development. So it's, it, it's going to be interesting to see, um, how those guys relatively play out. But man, I, I, I wouldn't want to own shares of either of these companies. No. Uh, and uh, I would not want to, because you and I have always said good management, good numbers, mm -hmm. and they've been wishy-washy. You have got to stand up. Albert Einstein once said, uh, bad, we cannot blame all of the bad things on the world on bad men. It's the good men who do nothing. And if you sit there and do nothing and watch these uh, companies go to non-profitable business models, that's it's your fault for investing. Yeah, it's in true. Them. It's your fault for investing in them. Mm -hmm. Not me. I ain't investing. Not me. Not with your money. No. So, all right. Well, we'll we'll jump into uh, the crazy plunge that oil prices has, but first. We got to pay the bills around here, guys. As always, the news and analysis you just heard is brought to you by the world's greatest website, www.energynewsbeat.com, the best place for all your energy and oil and gas news. Stu and the team do a tremendous job making sure that website stays up to speed. Everything you need to know to be at the tip of the spear when it comes to the energy and the oil and gas business. Hit the description below. You can take all of the links to the timestamps, links to all of the articles, and, of course, dashboard.energynewsbeat.com. Again, www.energynewsbeat.com. Thanks for checking us out. Um, 
you know, oil drops really today as 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 this OPEC plus boost of quote unquote, you know, or, or reaffirming of the cuts, you know, really kind of sees through the shakiness that is the demand market right now. Top line markets, though, a little bit wobbly. We saw the S&P 500 gain about a tenth of a percentage point. NASDAQ up about three tenths of a percentage point. Two and 10 year yields fairly flat. We did see Bitcoin up over 70,000, 2.7% increase for the day crude oil on the overall day down about a half a percentage point was down um as much as two and a half percentage points though um even below to that mid uh 72 uh below 7250 we currently sit 7287 um you know one of the big reasons we saw that was api um crude oil inventories come out um they say that um uh, or their guesstimate of the strategic petroleum um uh, not reserved, but our crude oil inventories tomorrow that the EIA will release was about 4.05 million bill build. Obviously, very draws. There was an uh, analyst had expected about a 1.9 million barrel draw. So you're talking about a six million barrel swing relative to where you know I don't buy thought it. versus to what happened. So that's main driver of prices, kind of underpinning again the weak demand side. I think people are confident that there's the supply there. The question is on the backside, where's the demand? Who knows? Well, that'll come up. I think it's going to be interesting and and uh, to, to kind of see where prices go. And, and I'm just waiting for Goldman Sachs' next bullish article. I mean, everybody revised their prices upward, and uh, it'll be interesting to see where this bottom comes out to be. Um, the I I disagree, and we're going to put it right here. We're going to take a uh, timestamp on this one uh, with the API report of the large uh, builds. Uh, I think the numbers may be manipulated. You think the numbers might be manipulated? Yes, it is for political reasons. It is being mani mani manipulated. Well, we love a good conspiracy. Um, that's it for me, though. Quick one on the on the oil side. What what should people be worried about these next couple of days? Well, I'll be in Abilene tomorrow, so off and running. Absolutely, guys. Well, with that, we'll let you guys get out of here. Finish up your day. We appreciate everybody checking us out here on the world's greatest energy news podcast, Energy News Beat for Stuart Turley. I'm Michael Tanner. We'll see you tomorrow, folks.